Black Dove is the latest project from renowned producer Daniel Lenoir, who has worked with some of the greatest artists of our time. You uh, 2 Peter Gabriel, Bob Dylan, Neil Young. It's a pleasure to welcome Black Dove live in studio. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to be here. Thanks for the invite. How you doing? We're here with the whole band. We've got donuts and us, and we're ready to roll. <laughs> So uh, it's a pleasure to have you. You can hear me okay, yes? Yes, I got you. Okay, good. Um, You know, we were chatting uh, before you went on. You were saying uh, you wanted to just use uh, monitors. Typically, uh, we kind of set things up a little differently. And it occurred to me that, hey, we have one of the great producers essentially producing the live session a little differently. But explain that. Well, uh, as I, we call ourselves a self-balancing act. Um, And you could think of it like a, a nice jazz combo that huddles up, huddles up together and no the drums aren't louder than the bass and so on so so we decided to huddle up like this to see if it works out and we have just a little bit of vocals coming out of these little speakers that Marco Polo Howard brought in from the east side and and so the differences here are in the interest of finding really the essence of your communication as musicians that's pretty much it, but because uh, if we're close together and Brian Blade on the drums is not behind glass, that means that he'll play better. Yeah. And so, <laughs> well, very. Uh, it's that's, interesting. That's the you know, fundamental philosophy of it. You know, just keep keep everybody huddled up. We're missing the campfire in the middle, but uh, <laughs> smoke alarm went off, so we weren't. <laughs> well, again, it's a pleasure to have you, sir. And uh, let's get into your first set, Black Dub, live on KCRW. Yeah, I can drink 
living in the past But I believe in you CRW version where everyone's playing quiet and nice, nice singing there, Trixie. So this next one uh, is uh, by popular request. <laughs> it's a song called Canaan. Uh, we don't often do it, but it features a nice three-part harmony, so let's see it.
am I from Canaan? How far am I from joy, from joy, from joy? That's the early morning blend. <laughs> that was called Canaan. And uh, this next one, uh, Trixie's going to go to the, to the drums. We do this twin drum kit, twin drum kit thing, if I can speak English, that we like. And uh, for those of you who can't see, it's a beautiful red sparkle Gretsch. And uh, Brian's going to lay down a groove on this.
Black Dub live on KCRW. We'll have autographed copies to give away a little bit later, as well as copies of uh, Daniel Lenoir's biography, Soul Mining, A Musical Life. Daniel Lenoir and Black Dub, our guests in studio this morning. You know, I do hear the difference is in the, you know, the subtle differences in uh, the way that you've set things up this morning. So nicely done. Oh, thanks. Uh, sort of, I think we got warmed up there on the last one, on last time. Yeah, I think we got a fire going over here, actually. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> Well, geez, uh, you sure you only want half an hour here? We could do an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I'll need to talk to Warren Alney about okay. that. <laughs> so, uh, so introduce us to who you have in the studio this morning. Of course, yeah. Uh, on drums, Brian Blade, uh, from all the way from Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, on bass, the pipe, Jim Wilson from Delaware, believe it or not. And then... Uh, I'm from Quebec, in Canada, originally, and then Trixie Whitley is uh, splits her time between Belgium and uh, and New York. Um, so that's the gang. Now we we uh, we reckon that you have probably known Trixie since she was a baby. Yes, she she stayed in my house for a while when she was just a, a little one, and. Uh, and then I didn't see her for a really long time. You so. produced her, her father's album. Actually, that's a misconception. Oh, um, okay. I'm, I was the, what was I, Trixie? Apparently more of a matchmaker than anything, because I invited Chris to come to uh, New Orleans and hang his hat there for a while, write some songs, and then that evolved into a record that he made, in fact, with Malcolm Byrne and, and some of the musicians that were in my place at the time. Well, tell us about the genesis of Black Dub. Uh, I know you, you premiered this, actually, on KCRW. Chris Doritas went over to your, your house and uh, recorded a session. I remember listening to this about a year ago, and I think it was the premiere of, of some of your first, your earliest songs. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, I have a memory of that. Uh, it's nice to see him on the east side. Um, and we've, we've got a, quite a few shows under our belt uh, now since that time. So we, and we're enjoying that part of it because we're, we're realizing what really works live and makes us hungry to go into the next album, next Black Dub album, which we're going to make in Jamaica. <laughs> mm. um, but as far as the, the origins of it, had you just come to a point with uh, certain material or, you know, what distinguished this in your mind as, as a band that you were in as opposed to a project you were producing? Well, it was, it was a dream come true, really, because uh, Brian Blade and I have been playing together for a long time, and, and uh, but I always had it in, in mind that uh, it would be great to put a band together that uh, were, were allowing me to take things to a more rhythmic place, and um, I could be a blazing, I get to be a blazing guitar player behind Trixie Whitley, so it's pretty good. <laughs> well, you mentioned a more rhythmic place, the name itself, uh, Black Dub, it does feel like uh, this is inspired by, by Jamaica, <laughs> you know, where you, you mention you're going to go next to record the, the next record. Yeah. Is that the case? I've always had a love for Jamaican rock and roll, as I call it, because there was a, a lot of innovation happening in the studio with very limited amount of equipment. And um, so I, I try and use that as a point of reference for low baggage, high mileage, and, uh, you know, we've, you know, certainly Marco Polo Howard, uh, who's doing sound with me, uh, he's spent some time in Jamaica, as I have over the last few years, so we see it as a reliable place of, of inspiration, and the dub culture is very alive there right now, so I think it's good for us. I saw a quote you, you had said, uh, real music, real music is a rare commodity these days. Oh, <laughs> real music? Well, maybe, uh, 
Maybe a better way to approach a subject matter is there, there's an appetite for authenticity out there in the world. And uh, we like to think that we're, you know, like in a setting like this, it's reassuring that we can actually knock it out in an in a, um, organic manner. And uh, so, th yeah, we bump into people all the time who say uh, that they, you know, they, they want to hear the real deal. And uh, if we qualify, then that's good. <laughs> You know, uh, ironically, sometimes the hardest thing to do is just be yourself. And I, I, I imagine as a producer, uh, so much of it is communication uh, with, with artists, with people, with musicians. Is that something uh, that you feel is a truth in terms of having a special communication with artists? It always starts with a philosophical exchange. You know, you want to hang around with people that are like-minded, but who are imaginative. And, uh, uh, you know, lucky for me, I've, I've had a chance to work with some smart folks with good songwriting imagination. Um, so that sets a standard for record making for me. Yeah. And we certainly have that with uh, the members of this little orchestra. Well, also congratulations. Smart cookies with burning hearts. Smart cookies with burning hearts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations, by the way, on the Grammy win, Neil Young, uh, for Best Rock Song. You produced the album Le Noise. Thanks. It's, it was very nice to have that work celebrated, and I've been waiting a long time to make a record with Neil, so it was a, a nice cherry on the cake. Mm. Now, um, I mentioned we have copies of uh, your biography to give away in a few minutes. Um, this is uh, this must have been a huge project for you. Tell us about putting this this uh, book together. Um, somebody along the way said uh, that I should write down a few of the stories from. Uh, from the past, and I, I thought, okay, well, let's let's try out a couple of chapters, and and uh, on reading back, they seem inspiring enough, uh, or they seem like they might be inspiring to a, a newcomer in this line of work, to know that it, yeah, it's just technique and there's equipment and all, but really, what's what's most important is uh, getting it right, either in the studio or on stage, you know, um, so the. That part of the equation uh, is still with us, you know, never fell out of fashion. Daniel Lenoir's Soul Mining, A Musical Life is his biography. It's available, and we're actually going to have copies to give away a little bit later, along with Black Dub's self-titled CD. So stick around for that as we head into your second set this morning. Daniel, thank you for coming through and playing for KCRW. Yes, it's, it's a pleasure. You know, we, we have a high regard for the work that you guys do, and and uh, and beautiful photographs in the hallway, by the way. Uh, yeah, what's uh, what's our photographer's name? Larry Larry Hershwitz. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's a master. Well, so. you know, you might have to join the ranks of our Hall of Fame here. So <laughs> just stick around. We're gonna get a shot yeah, of you. I hope they got a picture of Trixie. <laughs> All right, uh, Daniel Lenoir, Black Dub. Uh, take it away, sir. All right. So this uh, this next one, a song that I that Trixie does beautifully. It's called Surely, You're Meant to Be Mine. Surely 
be my love. You command my hand to ride in the dark hours of deep in called Nomad, uh, a song that I wrote quite a while back, Trixie heard it, and she said, I think, I think it has another place to go emotionally, and I, I'm very proud of where she took it to. It sounds like a young woman's song rather than a, a dirty old dog song. This is good. <laughs> Transmission 
redeemed. Gotta learn to love my sender. My job is here as a receiver. And till my bones come to summer bones. The way the no man knows. Skin is feeling, I'm feeling the ghost. I gotta move to some other coast. I feel the mortal dance. Twin drum song, one of them, and uh, this uh, last one is called. It's based on a Jamaican classic by Tenor Saw. Tenor Saw, a relatively unknown great Jamaican artist who wrote a song called "Ring the Alarm." So this is our rendition of it. Let's get, let me get let me get my sound going.
trying Oh, hey Another sound is dying Oh, hey Another sound is dying Oh, hey Bring me along Another sound is dying
the sound is dying. Oh, hey, bring me along. Another sound is dying. Oh, hey, bring me along. Another sound is dying. Oh, hey, bring me along. Another sound is dying.